Well, hello, friends, and welcome to another Parent Pit Stop presented by State Farm and SAD. These Pit Stop video segments are created to help parents coach their young drivers on their route to safe driving. Parents and other caring adults, you are the most important coaches in your new driver's crew. Boy, do we have an all-star panel with you today. Please join me in welcoming them. We have Ladon Trifunovic from California. Angie Lewis from Florida. From Michigan, please welcome Lisa Rich. Live from New York, Mark Anderson. And finally, from the great state of Texas, Brent. And Brent, remind me how we say you're, you're Mo. Got it. Yeah. Brent, Mo, we're good. All right, panelists, let's get right into it. Why is teen safe driving such an, an important issue? Mark, what are your thoughts? At State Farm, we're committed to helping life go right and being a good neighbor. One of our goals is to help build safer, stronger, and better educated communities. Unfortunately, we know too well that motor vehicle crashes are the leading teen death cause in the United States. In mm -hmm. fact, in 2017, uh, 2,364 teens in the U.S. ages 16, 19 were killed and about 300,000 were injured. Mm -hmm. That means every day, six teens aged 16 to 19 die due to motor vehicle crashes, crashes and hundreds and hundreds of more are injured. Wow, those are really alarming statistics. And I'm reminded that each one of those numbers doesn't really tell the whole story. Would, would you agree with that, Angie? Yes. Yeah, so um, although those are alarming statistics, um, the, real, the real devastation is the story behind each one of those numbers. It's the family member, the classmate, the person that, you know, is involved in their school. And those lives are just taken too soon. And as a State Farm agent um, and a parent, um, and being involved with uh, the local high schools here, we unfortunately have experienced um, those devastations in our community. And that is why we are proud to partner with SAD to help educate parents about safe driving habits. Ah, we couldn't agree more. We are so proud of this relationship that we have with State Farm at the national level, at the state level, and at the local level where we're all working together to keep teen, teens safe. Uh, a moment ago, I said that the best crew chief that teens have is a parent or other caring adult. Brent, perhaps you could provide us some more perspective on that. Well, Angie's numbers hit home. You know, Texas is a large state, one of the uh, highest uh, numbers of teen fatalities. And so, you know, we model our behavior after our kids, and our behaviors are very, very appropriate at a young age when these children are starting to pay attention to us. And that includes when we're behind the wheel. We kind of choose to be distracted in these days, cell phones. We choose to kind of run the yellow light, turn into red. We also choose not to buckle up. And we just choose not to feel comfortable sometimes behind the wheel. And your kids start to see that. So our students will do exactly what we do at a very young age. And it also starts when we get behind the wheel. Oh, I totally agree with what Brent's saying. So what I've seen um, in our agency, too, is when I, I bring our teen drivers in to meet with them about safe driving, thing, you know, as they're getting their license and their parents come with them, I'll notice when I'm talking about texting or just safe driving habits, them looking at their parents and kind of making faces or even calling one of them out and like, well, mom does that. So I think it's just important for us all to realize that we are our child's first teacher and mm -hmm. um, they are watching us. So um, we can start very, very early at the elementary, middle school age by really modeling and teaching them those safe driving habits. Such great points for everyone on the panel. Uh, let's go to Ladan. I know you're also passionate about these issues too. I am, and I, I really commend State Farm for what, what they do as a company, but as agents, we're such a great resource for our, for our customers. We provide an infinite amount of information on our website, uh, such as simple insights where parents can go and get additional information on what they can do to be, to be better instructors for their uh, team drivers. Uh, one of the greatest challenges right now with teens, for example, and this was brought up earlier, was the the experience level. The technology that comes into place is something that kids need to adapt to. And putting a young driver in, in behind the wheel 
they need that experience. They need to get built, keep building those skills. So the more we can get them behind the wheel and learning about the cars that they're in, the safer they're going to be. Such great points. I love those simple insights. They're such a great resource for teens, for parents, really for all of us on a wide variety of topics. And State Farm really is giving great tips to parents. What are some of those other tips that you would recommend, Lisa? I know you've got some thoughts on this. Yeah, most states do have nighttime restrictions as part of their graduated licensing laws, which is great. Um, Two thirds of teen crashes occur at dusk or during nighttime hours. So that's really, really important. Um, Some of the things that can affect that is limited visibility and changes in driving conditions at night. One thing we don't really think about is animals in the roadways. Our state of Michigan is actually fifth, ranked fifth, according to the State Farm data, with collisions with animals. Um, So that's that's huge. Um, Parents really need to just practice with their children, uh, teen drivers to make sure they're prepared. Uh, More practice, the better. And there's also the um, issue of driving while drowsy. Of course, at nighttime, most people are a little bit more tired than during daytime hours. So that's a a factor as well that needs to be discussed. Absolutely. Mark, what are you seeing in New York? Uh, Following distance is also important in New York. Uh, people do like to tailgate, and it's really a bad example mm-hmm. for young drivers. So uh, you should follow the three-second rule. Uh, it's not a rule how long it's safe to eat a chip that falls on the ground. It's an important rule to uh, help parents share with their teen drivers. So in normal driving conditions, the general rule is three seconds plus. So when a vehicle in front of you passes a stationary object, begin counting. You should reach that same object no sooner than three seconds and four seconds ideally. So um, especially at night and when visibility is poor, you should extend that just like uh, Lisa mentioned. Brent, what about what about uh, passengers? I know I know we've talked a lot about passengers and unfortunately uh, crashes in Texas often involve multiple teens. What are you what are you seeing from that perspective? Well, we've all mentioned that uh, setting the tone as parents um, tends to be the one constant that we've got as far as behavior in the car. Um, Obviously, the number of teens in a car exponentially increases the number of likelihood of of reckless driving. So it's a big issue in Texas noted earlier, and um, our expectations of what happens in the car and as the driver uh, is is definitely an insur- an insurance policy on how safe our drivers will be if we're teaching them as 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 young students. So we visit with our teens. I think Angie had mentioned we actually have old claim photographs and police department fatality mm-hmm. photographs that I keep in a small little book that uh, I show my teens and their brothers and sisters. And um, it's coming from me as the agent and our team. So it reemphasizes what mom and dad are doing, but it's also a visual that shows them uh, severe and or fatalities that we've accumulated yeah. since we've been in agency. So a big, big bullet point to, to uh, give your team and your, and your uh, kids something to look at and learn from. Wow, that's a, it's a sobering reminder and, and really does hit home of, of, of what's happening. Lisa, uh, I know you were going to add something on that topic. Well, this topic won't make me a favorite among teenagers, but um, what parents need to really understand is there there has to be consequences um, for an expectation. So they need to set clear expectations with their teen driver um, and then also outline what those consequences will be when they break those family rules. Um, the SAD contract for life is a great starting point for that discussion. Um, so there's a link below where you can access that document. Um, and parents need to stress with their team. Driving is a privilege, not a right. Um, so as long as they stay within good boundaries, that privilege won't get taken away. But the privilege can be taken away, not just by parents, but by the state as well. So that needs to be strongly enforced with teen drivers. Lisa, I can't agree more. Uh, the temptation as a parent to give the Teens drive, teen drivers their keys once they get the license and say, you're on your own. You take yourself to school. You run the errand. You go to, to soccer practice. It's quick to happen. And unfortunately, 
I don't think that we as parents remember that the cars we started driving and did not have all the distractions, all the bells and whistles, the cell mm-hmm. phones, the uh, the multiple channels and audio sources on the on the cars. Parents have to stay involved. They have to be a constant coach to their team drivers. Be patient. Let let them learn. Scoot over. Let the team drive. Mm-hmm. Get them involved in additional training. There's so many great not no cost uh, defensive driving courses like Brakes by Doug Herbert is a phenomenal yeah. opportunity for teens to learn how to drive better, safer, and be more aware than yeah. probably most adults have had a chance to do. Yeah. yeah. And Lydian, you're actually a, an instructor with Brakes. Is that correct? I am. Yeah. Very proud to say wow. so. It's one of the best programs I've been able to be affiliated with. Absolutely. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Wow. Panelists, you've given us a lot to think about. As we wrap up, I'm curious, if you could give one piece of parting wisdom to uh, new, new drivers and their parents, what would it be? What experiences would you share with them? Brent, we'll start with you. I like to use the word prepare. You know, there's an old adage, by, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. And I think I've used that a thousand times with our, with our teens, including my two daughters. And um, you just can't go out and just expect it all to happen. You kind of have to have a plan when you get behind the wheel every time. Well put. Lisa, how about you? I guess my main piece of advice would be to get as much experience and as pra- and as much practice as you can with your team driver. Um, you know, when you first get behind the wheel, everyone's very nervous, but you get better with experience. So that would be my piece of advice to get as much experience as you can because the more you experience, the better driver you become. So. Well put. But Dan, how about you? Yeah, we invest in our kids to train on on athletics and musical instruments, whatever it might be. You have to treat driving the same. And I couldn't agree more mm-hmm. with everybody else echoing the same sentiment. It has to be experience. Get them behind the wheel. Help them be better drivers. Help them be more aware. And the one piece of advice I'll tell parents to teach all their kids, get their eyes up, keep look up the road, put the phone away, don't look at it, just keep your eyes up. And probably good advice for parents as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, Mark? Well, one, one thing I always say to teen drivers uh, is, you know, have fun. You know, really, it's the most exciting time in your life when you begin to drive, but then also realize it's the most dangerous. So uh, I will agree with everybody else, a lot of practice, you know, with parents in the right hand seat, as much as the kids can be driving, um, make a game of it. And really, really like practicing, did you see that? Or what would you do? And, and really training, mm-hmm. training the thinking, the brain really to what ifs. Mm-hmm. Well put, I love, I love the game feature. You can make anything a little bit more exciting with a little bit of a challenge. And, and no one likes to beat mom and dad more than anything than uh, maybe a little game of being a safer driver, right? Good point, mm-hmm. good point. Last but not least, Angie, what would you share with our teens and parents? Yeah, um, a little bit what Mark just shared. One of the things, um, my grandpa's the one who actually taught me how to drive, and he used to talk about related to football, and it's like, we're not, you're not just an offense when you get behind the wheel, but you're also on defense. So just being aware of your surroundings, um, making sure that you are staying cognitive to, to what's going on, not getting distracted. And then with parents, just start that coaching early, start having the conversations, pointing things out um, and making sure you're, you're having those experiences in the car and a lot of practice. Great advice all around. Wow, I wanna thank our esteemed panel agents. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, thanks to State Farm for, for working with SAD to present these parent pit stops. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have now. Please make sure you're out there safe every trip, every time, Sad Nation. We will see you soon. Thanks.